I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to Sweetwater Soundcheck. This time out, a super compact, bus powerable digital mixer from Keith McMillan Instruments. Let's get started. Today we're checking out K-Mix from Keith McMillan. This is an 8 input, 10 output mixer that features built in reverb as well as DSP processing on all of the input channels and the main outputs. It can be used as a standalone digital mixer, or you can use it as an audio interface with your computer or iOS device, or you can use it as a control surface with your DAW. The K-Mix is a really solid feeling little mixer. It's sized so that it'll fit easily into a laptop bag. It requires no external power supply, although you can use it with an external power supply. And there are no moving parts, so you can actually pour liquid on it and it'll keep functioning just fine. This makes it ideal for a lot of situations. You could use it for mixing keyboards on stage. You could mix your whole band through it on stage. Works great for rehearsals. You could have it in your studio for capturing audio, using it as an audio interface, or for playback. It really does a great job of handling a lot of different situations. It's a versatile mixer that offers a lot of processing power, and again, it's so lightweight, so compact, and it can be bus powered, so you don't even have to connect it to AC. As I'm running the mixer here now, it's actually being bus powered by my MacBook Pro. You could also power it with an external power supply. One comes with it, and that connects into one of the ports on the back there. And you could use that simultaneously with your computer, with an iOS device. You can bus power it from either of those if they have enough output power. And if they don't, or you're in a situation where you need to preserve batteries, you can use the external power supply. For taking charge of the mixer, you can access most of the parameters right from the front panel. Everything that you need for a gig or for recording, you can do right from the front panel. To get into some of the deeper functions, there's the K-Mix Editor, which is a very easy to use piece of software that runs on Macintosh. There's a Windows version on the way as well. Let's take a quick tour. Beginning on the back panel, we have eight inputs. The first two inputs can accept mic level signals, and those feature the Micro Pre from Keith McMillan. They have up to 60 dB of gain, and they're switchable 48 volt phantom power for those inputs as well. Inputs 3 through 8 are line level signals, and those will also accept phono level signals. You could run a turntable directly in. For outputs, we have 8 quarter inch TRS jacks. Outputs 1 and 2 are our main stereo outputs. You'd route those to your speakers or to another recorder. Outputs 3 through 8 are set up as three stereo pairs, and those are by default routed from our aux sends. You could also use those as six independent outputs. Our final stereo pair of outputs is the headphone jack on the front panel of the K-Mix. Now let's check out our front panel. We have nine touch strips that serve as our faders. There are no moving parts here. Just slide your finger along and the light indicates your setting. Now, there are two different modes here. You have pass through on and off. With pass through mode turned on, when you slide your finger, once you pass the current setting, the fader will pick up and begin moving with you. With pass through off, wherever you set your finger down, the fader will immediately jump to that point and you can begin mixing. I've got it set for pass through mode right now. Our touch strips are also our solo and mute buttons. We hold the shift button down, touch the bottom of the strip, and we mute the channel. In the same way, we can hold the shift key down, touch the top of the strip, and we're soloing the channel. We have four rotary controls for accessing different parameters. And those parameters are selected over here with the mode buttons. Right now we're in main mode, which allows these to serve as our channel volume faders. When we're in aux mode, if we select aux 1, aux 2, or aux 3, these individual faders set the send amount from each of those channels. We also have pan control. So if we touch pan here, our first rotary controller sets the overall pan for the channel, and these three rotary controllers set the pans for our aux sends. You can return any control to its default setting by holding the bypass button and tapping the control. The K-Mix is based on a very powerful shark processing chip that's inside the mixer. This also allows us DSP processing on each of our channels and the main outputs. So each channel has its own independent compressor, gate, EQ, that's a three band EQ with sweepable mid range, and it also has a built in reverb. To access those, we use the mode buttons. So if we select compressor, we can choose our channel by selecting on the buttons here, and our parameters are here. So with our compressor, the light indicates this is our threshold, this is our ratio, and about here is three to one. We have our release setting, and we have our makeup gain. If we switch to the gate, we have the same settings, threshold, ratio, release, and gain. For our equalizer, when we select that, we have low frequency gain. If we hold the shift key, we have the low frequency setting. With our mid-range, we have mid-range gain, mid-range frequency, and with the shift down, we have mid-range Q. On the top, we have our high frequency gain. Holding the shift key, we get our high frequency setting. As I mentioned, we also have built-in reverb. So if we select the verb button, now we have pre-delay setting here, we have damping, diffusion, and decay, and our channel sliders now become sends into the reverb. 
We have a trim control for each input. Again, our sliders will do that for us. We can turn 48 volt phantom power off for our first two inputs. You could also set that to 15 volt phantom power if that's what your microphone requires. Finally, we have the headphone mode. When you select that, you're assigning the different inputs to the headphone output. So we can choose each of our individual inputs, sort of a PFL type setting, also great when you're recording for soloing of different instruments. Or we can choose main, and in this case, your headphones are going to feed straight out whatever's coming out of the main outputs. If we're using this as an audio interface, you can also feed from your DAW straight into the input channels or straight to the stereo bus and out the headphones. Finally, we can also use K-Mix as a MIDI controller. We have four different modes that are selected by the diamond controller here. We hold the shift key down to see what mode we're in, whichever one it is is green. So here we're in mix mode where the mixer is actually passing audio. When we shift, hit the top of the diamond, it turns green, and now we're sending out our first bank of MIDI controls. So for example, this is continuous controller number one, this is number two, number three. You can assign those to whatever you want. Any of the controls on the front panel can be set up to send out whatever continuous controllers or notes you desire. And push the right side of the diamond and we move into our second bank of MIDI controllers, and our third bank is here at the bottom. We can store presets into the K-Mix as well using the preset button and those can be quickly recalled. So if you have a band and you're playing in the same venue, you could set up a particular mix and quickly recall that. Or for different recording situations, you could set up the mixer for exactly the way that you want to record, recall the preset and you're good to go. Now let's switch over and take a look at the K-Mix editor which allows us access to all the parameters and also gives us a visual display of what's happening in the mixer. So if we choose channel strip here at the top, now we're viewing the actual signal flow of each channel inside the K-Mix. So we've got our input trim, a rumble filter, basically a low frequency cut. We've got stereo linking for pairs of channels, our EQ, compressor, gate, routing. We can make changes right here, they'll be reflected inside the mixer. Or when you make a change in the mixer, it's also reflected inside the K-Mix editor software. We can look at our reverb settings, and here we can see our sends for each of the channels. If we move to view our parameters, we can look at those as well. So we can easily make changes there. We can set our return level. So we have instant access to a communication between the K-Mix editor and the K-Mix mixer. One of the interesting things about the K-Mix is that it'll actually do surround mixing. With those eight outputs, we can configure it for multiple outputs to feed different speakers. So if we go to our surround mode here, it's very easy to see. So we'll set up our pan, select pan, and now we can see our surround panels right here on the front panel. We can choose our different modes for speaker layout. We could do quad, octo, 7.1, or I'm going to choose 5.1. So if we move one of our pans, we can not only see them moving inside the K-Mix editor, but you can also see what's happening here on the front panel of the K-Mix itself. Our next screen is our MIDI screen, and this shows us what's happening inside the K-Mix as far as our MIDI assignments. So we can choose each of our different controls. So here if we uh, go to our first bank, bank one, we touch our fader, we can see that it's assigned to bank one, CC one. In bank two, it's also assigned to continuous controller number one, and the same in bank three. And the different banks are set to different MIDI channels. And we can edit all of those settings to make them correspond to what we need to see either inside our DAW, inside a virtual instrument, or if we're using this with a K-Mix expander, which is an optional hardware expander, we can send those MIDI messages out to external MIDI hardware. Finally, we have our USB settings, so if we go over and take a look at those, those determine how audio coming from your DAW or feeding into your DAW is processed inside the K-Mix. So with USB input set to pre, audio is going to come in the input, go through the trim control so the gain is set, and then feed directly into the computer. If we set this to post, now audio will come in, go through the DSP processing inside the K-Mix, so we could EQ it, we could compress it, it'll go through the fader, and then into the computer. So you have your choice of operating in either way. Same thing on the output. When we're set to post, the output will come as a stereo pair coming from your DAW software out of the output of the K-Mix. If we set this to pre, now we can access those channels independently and use this to mix those signals that are coming from our DAW. So let's take a look at how this works. The K-Mix is a really nice sounding mixer. It's very transparent, has plenty of gain. The preamps sound really good. They're dynamic, clean, and again, very transparent. So they're ideal for capturing a natural representation of whatever you're recording. So I'm going to switch over to Propeller Head Reason. We'll open that up. I've got a mix set up here, and you can hear how that works. So in this case, basically I'm sending a stereo pair out of Reason through the K-Mix and into our cameras. Now if we switch to our MIDI control mode, we can use the faders and the rotary controllers to control the mixer inside of Reason. So we'll select bank one, and now when I move the first fader, we'll move the fader inside the mixer. When I move the rotary control, I'm moving the pan. 
And these assignments are very easy to set up inside a Reason, or you can configure them exactly the way you want using the K-Mix editor. I also have transport control, so we can play, stop, rewind, or we can go into record. So this makes K-Mix a very versatile control surface for operating your DAW software. But we can also use it as an audio interface with our computer for more than just playback. So if we create an audio track here, we'll set our input to number 2. Once we have our track created inside of Reason, we can start using the K-Mix as the input for our audio interface. To do that, we'll shift back to our mix mode, so now we're passing audio through the mixer. And I've got my microphone here, it's plugged into input number 2. We can set our trim level by just selecting trim, raising that up, check 1, 2, 1, 2, maybe not quite that high. We actually have VU meters available here by pressing the VU button, check 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. Go back to our main display and we can set our level on our fader. Check 1, 2, 1, 2. Also our master fader. Check 1, 2, 1, 2. And we're ready to record. Now we can shift back to our mix control. Check 1, 2. Check 1, 2, 3, 4. Recording into your DAW using the K-Mix is that easy. Since we have a microphone connected, let's go ahead and check out some of the other features. So as I mentioned, each channel has an equalizer. Check, 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 check. Test, one, two, three, four. Testing, one, two, three, four. We can also add reverb to our channel. So we'll select verb, turn it up on our channel strip. Check. And we can adjust the parameters. We have pre-delay, we have damping, we have diffusion. We can turn our decay way up. Check. Check. Turn it way down, shorten our pre-delay. Check. 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 In the same way, we can add compression on each channel or on the master output. We could add gating, and of course we have our equalization and reverb available. So there's a lot of processing power as a live mixer. The K-Mix does a great job. The K-Mix has lots of additional features, but several I wanted to point out to you. The first is that we have a bypass switch here, and that allows us to bypass our different DSP processors so we can hear the dry sound. We also have a find mode. We access that by pressing the find button, and now we have a tenth of a dB resolution on our controls. Finally, in surround mode, we actually can use the headphone output to feed our subwoofer, and there's built-in bass management to route those low frequencies out of that output. If you're looking for a compact, portable, lightweight mixer, the K-Mix is an ideal choice. You can bus power it, use it with a power supply, connect it to your computer, use it as an audio interface or as a MIDI controller, use it with external MIDI hardware using the MIDI expander as a MIDI controller, use it as a standalone mixer at gigs, at rehearsals. It really is a super versatile, very affordable, and as I mentioned, very compact digital mixer. Thanks for joining me for Sweetwater Soundcheck. I'm Mitch Gallagher.